is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us on Court TV News on the R. I am Tolut Ojewu. We're still making the rounds as the Chibok visit. If the information from Asorok is anything to go by, then it is certain that President Goodluck Jonathan has cancelled his planned visit to Chibok, the town where more than 200 school girls were abducted by Boko Haram on the 14th of April. Sources in the presidency say the earlier itinerary, which was to have the president stop over in Chibok on route Paris, France, was put off last minute for security reasons. The president, under pressure over his government failure to rescue the abducted girls, will now fly directly to Paris. President Jonathan has been criticized both home and abroad for not visiting the town more than a month after the girls were kidnapped. Meanwhile, U.S. officials have criticized the speed of Nigeria's response to the threat from Boko Haram. Alice Friend, director for African Defense at the U.S. Defense Department, says its security forces had been slow to adapt with new strategies and new tactics. She also says the U.S. was unable to offer aid to Nigeria's military because of troubling atrocities perpetrated by some units during operations against Boko Haram, noting that U.S. cannot ignore that Nigeria can be an extremely challenging partner to work with. In a related development, Jonathan will travel to Paris, France today to participate in a summit convened by President Francis Hollande to discuss fresh strategies for dealing with the security threats posed by Boko Haram and other terrorist groups in the West and Central Africa. According to a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ruben Abati, the president will be joined at a summit by heads of state and government of Benin Republic, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad. The statement read, it is also expected that Britain, the United States of America, and the European Union will be represented at the talks which will give special attention to the coordination and intensification of efforts to curtail the destabilizing activities of Boko Haram in Nigeria and neighboring countries in the wake of the recent abduction of schoolgirls. President Jonathan, who will be accompanied by the Minister of Defense, Ali Gizo, the National Security Advisor, Sambu Dasuki, as well as other principal aides and advisors, will return to Abuja at the conclusion of the summit on Saturday. And the House of Representatives has approved their request by President Goodluck Jonathan to extend emergency rule in Bruno, Yobi and Adama states by another six months. The decision came through a majority voice vote shortly after a closed door meeting between the lawmakers and service chiefs. Jonathan had forwarded the request for the extension of the emergency rule to the National Assembly on Tuesday. The speaker, Aminu Tambu, explained that a meeting focused on the current security situation in the states and the progress made so far to secure the release of the abducted schoolgirls. The chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Zakari Mohammed, later confirmed at a news conference that the service chiefs were able to convince lawmakers to extend the emergency period. The House of Representatives' approval of President Jonathan's request to extend emergency rule in three northeast states of Adamawa, Brno, and Yobe has come under heavy fire, even as the pan northern social political organization, the IRA Consultative Forum, kicks against the move. In a statement issued in Kaduna by the group's Secretary General Paul Luba, the organization says it was absolutely unnecessary to extend the emergency rule in the three northeastern states. It noted that rather than extending the emergency rule in the three states, the federal government should bring the entire country under emergency rule because of the state of insecurity in the land. According to the group, the year-long emergency rule in the three northeast states has not solved the insurgency. Rather, the states have witnessed more terror attacks than when the democratic system was left to run fully. 
The statement also lashed out at President Goodluck Jonathan and his wife Patience for their poor handling of the deduction of school girls from secondary school Chibok in Bruno State. Insisting that the mock trial of government officials and school authorities conducted by the First Lady is an embarrassment to the nation. The group then admonishes the president to show more commitment to the fight against terrorism and motivate security agencies to stop insurgency in the country. The All Progressive Congress has now urged the federal government to immediately stop the discordant tunes emanating from the highest echelons of government and speak with one voice on issues concerning the ongoing efforts to find and rescue the schoolgirls abducted by Boko Haram. In a statement issued in Abuja by its interim national publicity secretary, Lai Mohammed, the party says the conflicting statements credited to top government officials over the conditions given by Boko Haram for releasing the girls were totally unwarranted. Thus, the party added could send the wrong signal to the insurgents and hinder the efforts to ensure the safe return of the girls. The opposition party wants the federal government to designate a spokesman to be responsible for daily relaying to the public any relevant information concerning the search for the missing girls. And the authorities of the Nigerian army have reacted to the mutiny of some soldiers of the Division 7 of the Nigerian army by instituting a high-powered delegation to investigate the occurrence at the headquarters of the division at Maimalari, Maduguri. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Kenneth Minima, approved the immediate removal of the General Officer Commanding the 7th Infantry Division, Major General Abu Bakr Mohammed. The Army authorities have appointed Brigadier General Mai Ibrahim as a replacement for Abu Bakr, who was removed because of the deep resentment against him among the incensed soldiers and some of their colleagues. The Director of Defense Information, Major General Chris Olukolade, confirmed the removal of Mohammed and his replacement with Brigadier General Ibrahim. Now, the paramount traditional ruler of Lagos, Obarelu and Akiolu, has urged all well-meaning citizens to, of Lagos to support the candidacy of a former Accountant General of the state, Akiomi Ambode, to succeed incumbent Governor Babatun de Fashola as Governor of the state. He gave this admonition at a book launch for Ambode held at the Civic Center Lagos. Jumokyo Latuji, who was at the venue of the book launch, brought back this report. The choice of who becomes the Governor of Lagos, the nation's commercial nest center, is always a subject of interest to frontline politicians traditional rulers, and the business community in the country. The tenure of the incumbent Lagos State Governor, Babatunde Fashola, will end in less than 10 months from now, and the struggle for who occupies the Lagos House nest is gathering momentum. However, the media is awash with various names as those that will succeed Fashola. All of the speculations appear to have come to an end when the paramount ruler of Lagos, Obariliwan Akiolu, who is considered a strong power broker in the state, declared that the choice of Ambode as the next governor of Lagos is non-negotiable. <laughs> The occasion was the launching of a book titled The Art of Selfless Service, written by Marina Oshoba in honor of Akiwumi Ambadi, who was the former Accountant General in Lagos. The national leader of the All Progressives Congress and former Governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinumbu, was represented by Fola Otowari at the launch. A poor that encomium on Ambadi as a visionary and dedicated leader who is committed to selfless service to humanity. As that young, ambitious, and highly determined Nigerian who defied his humble beginnings at Ekwe to become a public finance management expert. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola describes Ambadi's tenure under his administration as one of the most rewarding. He was represented by Oluransi Adebule. It's easy for me to conclude that 
that is somebody is just not a successful administrator and a financial management expert, but an overall influ influential personality and a motivator. The royal father prayed for the country, expressed optimism that the foreign intervention will yield a positive result. Requested all most churches, the native believers to pray. If you can see your prayers, is not in doubt. We pray all will be well and those children will return hail and hardy to their parents. Cooperate with our people and assist us for what we want and, and God will reward us and give us exactly what we want. He's a man of many parts. Uh, accomplished civil servant, a thoroughbred professional, uh, a humble man, a lawyer personality, a man who has uh, cut a niche for himself in the sphere of life. He takes people along. He doesn't want to succeed by himself. He wants everybody to succeed. He wants everybody to be excellent. The occasion of the book launch has shed light on the most interesting political topic. Who becomes the next governor of Lagos? Today's declaration and endorsement of Akinwumi Ambade has set the pace for the race to Alausa in 2015. Olajumoke Court TV News, Lagos. We'll take a break now. When we come back, foreign stories. Please stay with us. On the gay list this morning, Nigerians encourage corruption inside to infest up the country's the dailies every day on core tv news nigerians continue to night the city of lagos be the first to know core tv news from the north south east west and around africa of federal High we Coast. break the news we are one nigerian now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads we are core tv news welcome to core tv 24 hour news station Thanks for being there. You're still watching Court TV News on the R. For more information on our news and other programs, please visit us on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Court TV News NG. Also on YouTube, www.youtube.com forward slash Court TV Space News. Now a quick visit to Brazil. Brazil is now facing an acid test of its security preparations for the World Cup. As demonstrators aghast at the cost of the event, initiated protests and strikes in several major cities. Ongoing work stoppages by police and teachers and the threat of a nationwide strike by federal police also raised fears of chaos with just four weeks to go before the cup starts in earnest. In business hub Sao Paulo, about 5,000 members of the homeless workers movement, MTST, set fire on car tires and marched to the Corinthians Arena, which hosted the opening match between Brazil and Croatia on the 12th of June. Although most demonstrations were peaceful, police used tear gas against a group of masked demonstrators in Sao Paulo as tensions rose there. Other demonstrations took place in Belo Horizonte, Brasilia, Manos, Porto Alegre and Rio. Police put the total of protesters at around 10,000. From Brazil to India, Hindu nationalist Narendra Modi looked set to emerge victorious in India's elections, riding a wave of public support for his message of jobs and development that has drowned out his past as a religious uh, right wing. Now, vote counters started at the climax of the marathon six week election, which saw a record 551 million people file through polling votes from the Himalayas to the country's southern tip. Modi, a 63 year old son of a low caste tea seller, has reinvented himself from a controversial regional leader tainted by anti-Muslim riots to an aspiring statesman intent on helping India fulfill its potential. Surveys indicate that Bharatiya Janata Party is heading for its best ever results 
in a parliamentary election after 10 years of rule by the leftist Congress party and the Gandhi political dynasty. After a presidential star campaign built around him and his record running Western Gujarat state, expectations are sky high of what Modi will deliver in a chaotic and still poor country that is home to a sixth of humanity. Modi's promises to revive the flagging economy have won him corporate cheerleaders while his rags to riches story and reputation as a clean and efficient administrator satisfy many Indians' desire for strong leadership. That's it on our news on the R for this time. A big thank you to you for watching. Good afternoon. I'm Tolu or Jeremy. See you on top of the R.